Hi YouTube, how you doing? So I'll give you a quick update. I think Claire, my friend, said today that um, whilst my YouTube yesterday was very sad and I appreciate everybody's messages, I have read them briefly. I've had the busiest day. Um, that it might be a good way to kind of offload the day's events, I guess, about what's going on with me. And yeah, I think she's she might be right. Um, today's been a typical roller coaster. Firstly, I must talk about my daughter, Chelsea, who is just, I couldn't be, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for her. She has totally picked up the baton of being my absolute rock at a time like this. Um, you guys know that Willow is three years old. She's really protective. She's never left her for a whole day and she's been with me every day since this has happened. Um, leaving Willow with her daddy, don't get me wrong, it's not like she's gone to a stranger, but she's stepped up and said, no, my mum needs me. And I'm like, I need Willow, you know. Um, I'm missing her dreadfully, but we haven't told her about grandpa. We haven't um, even broached it. We're trying to tell her a few porkies that we're out to lunch or we're doing something else because we don't want to traumatise her at this age. And we've still got nothing concrete to tell her. Grandpa is asleep at the end of the day. Um, Grandpa's being kept alive. Um, but Chelsea's going to, because it's been Sunday today, tomorrow's Monday, which means things are open. It's a normal working day. It's New Year's Eve. So that's a bit of a head fuck for me. I didn't even realise that New Year's Eve had crept up upon us. And um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of an odd one, isn't it? When you're meant to be out celebrating. I was meant to be in France with Howard and Claire's Tony and his mum. And that's not happening now. But anyway, um, so yeah, t today started major busy. Howard has had six people come and visit him. I've spread it out over the day. His uncle Mark came, his son David came. Phil and Liz, there's lots of people and I, you know, I knew it had to, I say I knew it had to happen, don't get me wrong, if I didn't want people to come here, that's my call also and I'm, I have every right, I guess, to be able to say no, I'm done, but I'm not going to do that, I'm, I think if people love Howard as they do and that people really do and I'm drawing so much comfort from that, that nobody's got a bad word to say about my husband and everybody's just totally, totally shocked and devastated for me and for him. And, you know, the, the, the prayers that have gone on around the world has blown me away. The messages and the offers of help have blown me away. Even the offer of a Reading taxi, Paula, thank you. You, you know, um, at a time like this, people, human beings truly do pull together, don't they? And I'm not used to that outward kind of pouring of love and emotion from other people because I don't ask for help. And, you know, in this instance, it's a prayer I'm asking for and a miracle. Um, but and lots of people are sending me messages saying they do happen and I really really hope that they do how he had a um, they reduced his uh, sedation again today and I was there talking in his ear while they were reducing it and he um, he had some bigger movements today he's been having seizures when they take the sedation away and he had some bigger movements and I saw him yawn twice and I actually took it as a really good sign and I sort of smiled a bit and thought oh I felt like for the first time maybe there's a bit of hope maybe he will come back to me it was just a glimmer something to grab onto and I came away and then I said to the doctor that was good wasn't it he, he moved his hands in a different way or he moved his arm and the doctor said it wasn't good at all Jan that's worse and I was like oh shit you know when you kind of go up and then down and um, we had to, um, Howard had a pump fitted for his, he was insulin dependent and the doctor asked me yesterday, could I access his um, pump and the app on his phone? I said, yeah, I'll try. Anyway, absolute nightmare trying to get passwords and bits and pieces. But yet again, Chelsea just completely, I started the phone call and about three minutes into the phone call, I can't, I just wanted to smash the phone. I just... I just wanted to say, fuck off, I don't want to speak to anybody or do anything. Anyway, she took it over and, and she's had three phones between her and they managed to work it out and get it going and we managed to get the password and um, or they made a new one or something under Howard's name and 
we got the information that the doctor needed. The doctor wanted to see what his insulin levels and his blood sugars were on the night that, that he slipped into a coma. So they now have all of that information, which is, is good. I'm not quite sure where that, you know, they're, they're just looking at it to see why Howard went into a coma. If he was having regular lows at a certain time of night and he normally felt it, why didn't he this night? Did something go wrong? Is it, um, you, you know, and I'm like, oh, never even thought about any of that. Um, God, But then again, saying that, I didn't think diabetes would cause him to be in a coma with a bleak outlook right now. So um, you really never know, guys, do you? you none of us. I, I know we hear that all the time. You know, hug your, lo hug your loved ones a bit tighter today. Do this, do that. Um, and we all go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's really fucking true because I just wish I could hug him again now, you know, and hug him and love him a bit harder. Not that I didn't anyway, but will I get that chance again? I don't know. Well, I am hugging though. It's his, I've got his jumper. <laughs> I went home today. I managed to go home for an hour or so. And um, it was good to see my cat. It was good to see Piju. Um, and I thought I was really quite worried about going back in the house because the last time I was there, we were pulling him into a, a paramedic, you know, into an ambulance. But actually, actually, I felt quite comforted being there. So I think I'm going to make a decision. I will stay here in this little room on uh, tonight and tomorrow night, which is New Year's Eve, maybe another night. And then I'm going to make the call to actually go home, I think, because... I will come back every single day and be by my husband's side. Um, but I think being with my cat and not having to rely on my neighbours to do stuff would probably be a good good thing for me. Maybe I've been in this hospital since Boxing Day, the next day, whatever, 27th, 28th. Um, I realised today I had half a, a microwave macaroni cheese and that's the first hot meal that's gone past my mouth since Christmas Day. Um, but, but it's not a good way of doing anything is it because I feel weak I feel shattered I still can't sleep um and I'm not quite sure when that's going to get better but I'm just putting one foot in front of the other and I am taking every day as it comes that's all I can do uh people saying you know you're so strong no I'm not I'm not strong at all I don't feel even in the tiniest bit strong I feel weak out of my depth and totally out of my control totally last night was really really nice there was a nurse on and she asked me if there was anything I could do and I just said to her that I feel he's in a bay with four I can't even remember if I told you this guys last night if I did I'm really sorry because I'm repeating myself but then you're probably used to that because I always do um I, I said to her I felt really odd because the curtains have always got to be open and it's a four bay room in the intensive care. I said and I just feel really strange when I want to whisper in my husband's ear. I'm always thinking that somebody's looking at me and I know nobody's judging me in there. But there's no privacy. And I, I just mean for me to be able to have a cry on his shoulder or hold him. And she just stood up and she pulled the curtain around. She said you have your hug down. So I was able to get on the bed basically and hold him but fucking hell I thought I'd been hurt in the past Poof. you know I thought I'd known what grief is in the past I hadn't got a fucking clue this is this is like intense weird waves of something you can't even describe um he is my soulmate. I don't know how I'm going to live my life. I know I have to live my life. I'm not suicidal, by the way. I mean, I just don't know where my... I spoke to a friend today about um, four people getting together and I got really upset because it used to be the six of us and I don't want, I don't want to see them without him. So... <sighs> I promise I'm not going to come on and just cry all the time. I promise. But this is my time because everyone's been here today and I've held it together really well. And I knew I get to the evening time now. This is why I tell people to go away so that I can actually just have my cry. Snuggle up to his jumper. 
which totally smells of him. I wanted to put it on as well, and then I thought, oh no, because I'll lose the smell. It sounds like he's dead, doesn't it? And I totally get what that sounds like, because this is what people do when they're dead. But he's not dead. He's in a bed over there, but he's not alive either. So I'm I'm in this real middle ground of, I think I'm grieving for somebody, even though he's not dead. I'm grieving for my marriage. I'm grieving because I've lost my best mate or losing because they're not giving me a glimmer of hope. Still, tomorrow we see the neurologist. Apparently it won't be till the afternoon. And then on uh, Tuesday, they're going to give him an extensive CT scan. And I think I feel fortunate because my husband's still here, but the lady that was in the room next to me, her husband, they switched off his machine today. So uh, I don't want to be in that position either. You know, you're like far out. This is one crazy motherfucking roller coaster of a ride that I don't want to be on, but I don't have a choice, you know. And as horrible as it is, if the shoe was on the other foot, Harry would be my, by my side too, and I know that. <sighs> so I'm I'm actually in bed at quarter to eleven. I think I've said my good night to him now. I don't think I need to go there again now. I'm going to have a drink, try and upload this, and actually try and get some sleep, try and get more than a few snatched minutes. As you can see, my eyes are looking, mm, like I've done 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. Um, I'll end up with no friends because I found myself really snapping today, But and I'm, I am grateful for everything everybody's doing, but I think today might have been too much with people. I think I don't need days like that, and definitely need evenings on my own um i think i told you didn't i chelsea's coming to stay with me new year's eve which i think is going to be a good idea because i have a feeling i'm going to struggle tomorrow night with harry not being near me for the first time in 20 years so on a new year's eve and i probably will have some prosecco in my room in the hospital I might even go and drip a little bit on his lips who knows are we like that anyway thanks for listening and thanks for all your support and your prayers are really really appreciated you keep praying for him you know and i'm even praying i'm starting to make friends with um him upstairs I, I've, I've stolen that from claire did you like that claire i stole that from you anyway take care people thanks for watching and thanks for all your love and support it, it does mean an awful lot i said that yesterday like i didn't come on here for your messages but actually i scroll through them and it's a really nice it's actually a distraction from what whatever i'm thinking or feeling at the time so i i do appreciate all of them and all of you so i will update you as much as i can if you don't mind me looking like a hot mess and an ugly cryer